continue here looking the life of Noah. I'm trying to get through this thing uh, so we're not so we don't stay on it too long, amen. But I'm enjoying it. I don't know about y'all, uh, but I, it's helped me. This this study through the life of Noah has helped me tremendously. Uh, just looking at his life, his faithfulness, and the stand that he took in those days. Uh, and those days mirror the days that we're living in today. And uh, I appreciate the stand that, that Noah took. And I think it's getting... Our day is getting worse and worse, and uh, it's going to get to the point where uh, it is, you know, the Bible even said, I mean, he's just, it, 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 in the days of Noah, so will it be. Amen. So we're looking at those same days ahead of us, and I think we're already there. Uh, so let's turn to Genesis chapter number 6 tonight. The Bible says in verse number 18, But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt... Come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee, and of everything and every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They, they shall be male and female. And I, uh, I want us to look tonight, we've looked at the miracles and the things that have taken place and how special it is and how miraculous that it is uh, that this that just the act of and the process of building the ark and bringing the animals to the ark. Uh, and you say, what in the world does this have to do uh, with my life today? It has a lot to do with your life today. As I just said, we know that in the days of Noah, it's going to be the same as it was as it is now. And so we know that it's going to be a dark, wicked day and a day that in which uh, Christians are going to have to take a stand and going to have to stand on things uh, and stand firm on things. Amen? And so we know uh, the Bible says that that was the only way, that was the only uh, uh, way that, that Noah found grace in God's eyes was taking a stand for what was right and, and following God's commandments and doing what he asked us to do. Amen? So we look. We're going to look tonight at the ark, and I want to. Sh I want to show you a few things tonight. Uh, this is the place of preservation. This ark was the place of preservation. We looked at the prerequisites of preservation. We looked at the people of the preservation, the participants of the preservation. But tonight we're going to look at this ark for just a little while. The place of this preservation. Number one, we're going to look at some. We're going to look at how this the ark. Uh, is a perfect picture of our salvation. Amen. We're going to look at the ark and see how and show that, it, that it's a perfect picture of our salvation. Number one, we see the source of the salvation. Uh, how is that a picture of God's grace, of, uh, a picture of, of salvation? Is because uh, the ark was all God's idea. Amen. Man, man didn't think it up. It wasn't a method. <coughs> Excuse me. It wasn't a method that man dreamed up or thought about and thought, hey, I can do this to be saved. Uh, it was all God's plan. Amen. Just like our salvation is all God's plan through Jesus Christ. He's the vessel. Amen. <clears throat> there was only one method, only one way. Man would not have thought it up. Uh, and he, he wouldn't have dreamed this up because there, they had never before experienced any rain or flood. The gospel is God's idea. Men tried to tamper with the gospel and remodel it, but the, they only disable the gospel. God's gospel needs no changing. It needs no work. It is what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> so God came up with this method. God came up with this plan, this idea uh, for Noah to be saved. Amen. So we see there the source of the salvation. And I want to tell you tonight that Jesus Christ is a perfect picture of that source. Even in the Bible, the Bible, uh, Jesus Christ referred to himself as the door. Amen. And we know that on the ark, it only had one door. Amen. And Jesus Christ is the only door. He's the one door. Uh, no man coming to the Father but by him, the Bible says. So you know that Jesus Christ is the door, and the ark only contains the one door in or out. Amen. So not only do we see the source, 
But we see the singularity of the salvation. The singularity. There was only one ark. One ark. There was only one way to be saved. There was only one way in, one way out. Salvation is also demonstrated uh, that there was only one door in regards to the gospel. That door is Jesus Christ, John 10, 9. He alone is the way, John 14, 6. Neither is there any salvation in any other, but for there is uh, none other name under, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, Acts 4, 12. It is, it is popular today to include all religions as a means of salvation. But let me just say this. There is only one form of salvation. Amen. One form. These folks could have, they, they could have built what they thought was a boat. They could have built what they thought was an ark. They could have, they could have held on to that thing. They could have said, you know what, well, I'm going to hold on to this piece of driftwood. Hopefully it will get me through. They could have said, I'm going to hold on to this. Uh, I'm going to try to build my own route, raft. I'm going to try to build my own boat. I'm going to try to build my own uh, ark, but it wouldn't work because it wasn't God's design. Amen. There's only one way, one way. Amen. We need to understand that when you're talking to someone and you're witnessing to someone, you're trying to win somebody to Christ. It is important. It's imperative that you make them understand. You help them to understand that there is only one way to heaven. Amen. And that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not through works. Now listen, and not only do we need to help them to understand that Jesus Christ is the only way, but that, that, that going to the church that involves Jesus Christ or reading a book that involves Jesus Christ isn't the way. Because a lot of times, a lot of folks will get confused. They think, well, I go to church. I do this and I do that. I pay my tithes. But listen, they must walk through the door. Amen. They must come to that door and enter in through that door or there will be no way into heaven. Amen. The singularity of salvation. I'm thankful this evening that there's only one way to heaven. I'm glad that it's that simple. I'm glad that it's not confusing. I'm glad that I can tell my children and explain to my six-year-old son how to be saved and he can understand it and be born again. Amen. I'm glad that we can speak to someone on their deathbed and they can understand and grasp the concept of salvation. We can talk to someone who's not even in their right mind and they can still understand the gospels. Amen. Uh, and they can understand what it means to be saved. And I'm so thankful this evening uh, that there is only one way to heaven so not only do we see the singularity of salvation let's look at the security in salvation the bible said that it was covered with pitch within and without that provided security from leaks and thus sinking the ark pitch is translated atonement in scripture as we learn, the atonement for our sins is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Salvation is obtained under the blood on the faithful night or through the blood of Jesus Christ like the Israelites who were under the blood on that faithful night in Egypt. So are believers covered and protected by the blood of Jesus Christ in salvation. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 7, we have redemption through his blood. Having made peace through the blood of his cross in uh, Colossians 1.20. Ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with, precious, with the precious blood of Christ in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 18. Justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans 5.9. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of that blood, there's security. You can't wash that blood away. Amen. Just like I said just a second ago, over in Egypt, when they spread that blood on the doorpost and that death angel came through the town, they were saved. And one of these days, as I preach this morning, we're going to stand before God and we're going to give an account, amen, of what we did with Christ in our life, amen. And I'm, going to, I'm glad to say that I've had the blood applied, amen. Brother Sharon, there's nothing, there's nothing that I can do, there's nothing that anybody else can do to take my salvation away. My salvation is here to stay, amen. I'm a part of him, he's a part of me. I've accepted that blood, amen. It's a part of my life. There's nothing that can change that. 
that. Amen. When Noah got on that boat, there was no way for him to get out. Amen. Unless God let him out. Amen. And listen to me tonight, friend. I'm thankful tonight for the salvation. I'm thankful for the security of my salvation. There's a lot of folks tonight that believe you can lose your salvation. Listen, if you read your Bible at all, it's easy to see that Jesus Christ, when he bought you, he bought you. Amen. He, you're bought with a price. Hey, you're his. You belong to him. Amen. There's nothing you can do about that. Amen. You're adopted into the family of God. Thankful for that security. Also, we, these, we see the simplicity of salvation. There was nothing difficult or complex about the safety in the ark. All a person, listen to me, all he had to do was walk into it. That was it. It could not have been any simpler than that. There was no, there was no puzzle maze to get in. There was no, there was no uh, password. You didn't knock on the door and they didn't say, what's the password? What's the secret code? No, you just walked in. There was no puzzle maze. It was all, the, there was, you didn't have to have a college education. The, there was no requirements. There was no ID. There was only one way. You just had to walk in. And the only reason, the only excuse for those people to die, listen, for those people to have died was simply because they didn't walk onto the ark. One must simply call upon Jesus Christ as Brady did this morning, come to an altar, call out on God. And because of that, he's not going to die and go to hell. All you got to do is just walk to him. Reach out to God. Find him. Listen, that's the only way to heaven. And it's just that simple. What a lot of times folks try, a lot of, uh, folks try to, try to uh, uh, com complicate the gospel. And, well, you got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to feel this, and you got to feel that. And if it wasn't done this way or it wasn't done that way, then you're not really saved. Let me just say this. It's as simple as walking through a door. Amen. And I'm thankful that it's that simple this, this evening. The sustenance and salvation. Genesis 6, verse 21. And take thou unto thee of the all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee. It shall be food for thee and for them. Those on the ark would not die of weakness. Ample food was provided for their daily nutrition and strength. Salvation, likewise, does not leave you barren. It doesn't leave you weak. It provides all you need for daily strength. Jesus Christ is not only our salvation, but he is our strength. So Paul could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Just as the ark not only provides salvation from the flood, but it also provides strength for those in the ark. Christ also both saves you and gives you the strength to live a Christian life. Amen. So we see here, we talked about this the other night, how God told Noah to go and find the food. All right. He told him to go and gather the food. Amen. God provided the food. All Noah had to do was go work and gather. Amen. That's the same way with our Christian life. If we're going to get the strength that we need, if we're going to get the nutrients that we need, it's not going to just happen. Amen. We got to get in his word. Amen. Where do we glean from the word of God? Amen. Where do we get our food? Where do we get our nutrition? Many times throughout scripture, is it, it, does, does it liken the scripture as the bread of life? So just like Noah, if, he, if, we, if you want to eat, you got to go get it, Noah. You got go, you to you go gather and you got to bring it in yourself. You got to do the work. Amen. And if we're going to get anything from Scripture, if we're going to get anything from God's Word, we're going to have to open it. We're going to have to read it. We're going to have to study it. We're going to have to go through it. And we're going to have to let it be a part of our life every day. Amen. If we're going to get anything from it. Lastly. We see the scorning of salvation. The ark wherein only eight few souls were saved. 1 Peter 3.20 
Most people rejected this, the way of salvation via the ark. Only eight people of at least a billion people accepted the ark as a means of safety. And let me just say this. It was big enough. It probably wouldn't have held, it wouldn't have held the billion, but it would have held some. Several thousand. It was, it's huge. It's, it's, it's ginormous. And, if, and so the excuse is there's not enough room. That's just a bunch of junk. The simple fact is they just, they, didn't, they just didn't walk through the door. Only eight people. Most scorn the gospel message about soul salvation. They reject Jesus Christ as a way of eternal life. The world thought the ark was a bunch of foolishness. Just like they think our salvation is a bunch of foolishness today. They think, they think this is all just a big game. Listen, there's folks, there's folks that sit in here, there's folks that sit in this church that think it's a game. There's folks, there's fo listen to me this evening, there's folks that should be here tonight that think it's just a game. That think it's just, well, I'll just do it every now and then. I'll just go and visit the ark. We'll go look at it and admire it. But I'm not going to get all the way in. Let me remind you that the Bible says, straight as a gate and there is a way, and few there be that find it. Few. A lot of folks, they reject Jesus Christ as a way of eternal life. The world, they thought it was a bunch of foolishness. They thought it was a joke. They thought, it was, they thought Noah was crazy. Why in the world would men need such a structure? So the gospel is viewed by the world as foolishness. The preaching of the cross, listen to me, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1.18 The world has so many methods today they view as better than the gospel. Psychology, psychiatry, education, social programs, they think are all superior to the gospel. But none of them work as well as the gospel. The world has nothing to offer to protect man from eternity from the wrath of God. If you were to go out into this world, if you were to go to UGA, if you were to go to the top universities in the world and say, what is your answer? You ask, you ask these, you ask some of these, these atheist philosophers and these these teachers and these. You said, "What's your answer? What is your answer for eternal life? How is it you're going to live forever?" They would give you some kind of bogus answer, or they wouldn't give you nothing at all. Or they would say, well, you know, I don't believe in all that. I think, you, I think when we die, we just die. Exactly. Like a dog. Yeah, we just die. You just, you just go in the ground and that's it. They don't have an answer for eternal life. And then when you try to, you try to share the gospel with them, it's just foolishness. The Bible even said, he told us it, it, it's full, he, it would be foolishness to them. But I'm glad we have a way. I'm glad God provided a way. I'm glad that he, he had a perfect method and a form of salvation for us to go to heaven. I'm glad that, listen, I'm glad that whenever it came my turn to get on board, Brother Shannon, the ark, it wasn't, I didn't have to show credentials, thank God. I didn't have to show any kind of, uh, I didn't have to show what my heritage was. I didn't have to do a DNA test, see who my daddy was. I didn't have to, I didn't have to show my bank account. I didn't have to do a credit check. All I had to do was walk through the door. And I'm thankful that t tonight that, that that's all it takes 
is for somebody to just walk through the door. Amen. How about y'all? Amen. I'm going to end it right here because I'm losing half of y'all. Half of y'all are done asleep on me. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity we had to be in your house tonight. Pray God you be with us now as we depart. And pray, uh, bring us back safely on Sunday. We sure do love you. Thank you for all your many blessings on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and get your J-Dollars out.